So you wanna know how to get the black border on almost every map in Bloons TD6. Over my time on YouTube I've made over 50 chimps guides with different strategies, so I thought I'd share with you guys the ones that I think everyone can do, that are very newbie friendly and that are guaranteed black borders on most of the maps. Towers are getting changed on a patch to patch basis, but there have been some chimp strategies that have survived the test of time and have been doing great for many many patches. In this video I'm gonna go over 3 easy to execute strategies with a decent amount of room for error, which should help you guys black border the majority of the maps in BTD6 and at the end I'm going to go over a few towers that you should experiment and have fun with because not every chimp's game should be taken seriously. Before we begin, don't forget to leave a thumbs up on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, it really helps out the channel in navigating the algorithm and let's start with the first one. Alright, so the first one is a strategy that everyone's familiar with and that is the Obin, Ninja, Alchemist and Sun Avatar strategy. This one can go in many directions but the core of the strategy are these 4 towers which can easily deal with rounds 6 through 79 and on some maps it can even go in the mid to late 80s. It usually goes something like this, a ninja start, usually a 201 ninja into open, a 302 ninja afterwards and by round 40 your goal is a 402 ninja and a 401 alchemist. You will have some money left over so you could get the super monkey and don't forget to use those brambles for the moab on round 40. Get a 200 village, slowly upgrade your super to 302 and then move on forward with your game winning tower or towers. This can be an avatar of Riot druid spam an Apache Prime on the easier maps, maybe a Monkey Ace upgraded to a Sky Shredder or if you're a fan of Microing, you can also get a Blue Incineration Mortar. If you want to keep the Sun Avatar as your main DPS, get a Perma Brew Alchemist and some Utility Towers for the Ultra Late Game. The choice is yours and it's guaranteed to work on most maps. I'll also be dropping links in the description to some videos I made recently with some of these strategies so make sure to check them out as well. The second one is a strategy that I've been getting used to a lot in the past few updates and that is the strategy centered around the carrier flagship mid game. Now I'm referring to the strategy as the carrier flagship mid game strategy because it really doesn't matter how you get to the flagship as long as you do get to him in a decent time, preferably before round 63. My current favorite hero is Quincy so I usually like doing Quincy starts and then going along the route of either a 204 sub and a 401 alchemist to buff him up and of course a 102 sniper for the uh, lead balloons on 28 and 30 and then getting straight into the 502 carrier flagship or on some maps you can switch up the sub for a ninja like we had in the previous strategy and the rest is pretty much the same. Now a great thing about the carrier flagship is that currently he's so strong that he easily takes care of the mid game and can easily get you into the late 80s. After that the choice on the game winning tower is yours, but my favorite thing to do is to get a 520 ace and then do a 025 perma spike with a 400 alchemist. And on some maps you can even save up for an apache prime. I've made videos with both of these strategies on different maps as well as two additional strategies making it a total of 4 which I'm gonna link down in the description. The game winning towers are again entirely up to you and when you have over 40 to 50 thousand dollars left over, sometimes even nearly 60 thousand dollars to spend, it really is hard to lose. Pick whatever hero you want and the hero selection can vary depending on the map or the early game. So for example you can use Brickle because of the synergy with water towers, Obin and Quincy are both very strong end meta heroes or just honestly pick whatever hero you want because ultimately they don't really do too much with this strategy. So use them to solve early game problems like lead popping power, camo detection or moai popping power. The third strategy is simply rushing an apache prime without too many towers in between. We are going for the most cost effective towers in the game, so it's usually Quincy as our hero, a ninja or a sub early game, usually with an alchemist and then straight into a heli pilot. Buff him up with a 400 alchemist under a 220 village and make sure to get the apache dart ship before round 63. After that start saving up for an apache prime and make sure to get an overclock engineer and utility towers like a 024 mortar and a 04 ninja for rounds like 95. 98 and 99. I've made a guide using this strategy for Infernal and Cornfield which I'm gonna link down below. An important part of the game are utility towers which on some maps make the difference between winning and losing. The most notable examples are the 040 Sabo Ninja usually used on rounds like 95, 98 and 99 
the 024 mortar for removing the fortified state off of Moab class balloons, mostly used on round 98. A 040 sub or a 240 spike, usually used as extra damage for the bad balloon on round 100. And something like a 023 glue for that extra bit of slow, which is useful for the entirety of the ultra late game. A 024 boomerang is a great bang for your buck when it comes to stalling chunks of Moab class balloons and cheap Moab damage, as well as a 032 alchemist, but be careful with that last one. Now, before I end this video, I want to talk about experimenting. I'm not one to experiment too much with my chimps guides because I always want to be as efficient as possible using meta strategies that can be done by everyone. And when making guides, you kinda have to care about this stuff. With that said, there are some cool towers and upgrades you guys should definitely try out in your chimps games. The first one is the recently buffed Prince of Darkness. This guy is insanely powerful right now and there have been a lot of new 2 tower chimps clearings with him recently. Another strong tower is the tag zone which you would usually like to pair with Pat and maybe even try overclocking it. They synergize amazingly and can almost deal with the most difficult rounds in the game like 95 and 98 on their own. I would also recommend trying out a sub spam which is basically a lot of subs around the sub commander and a ninja spam which is a bunch of shinobi ninjas around the grandmaster ninja. And to finish things off my last two recommendations are a permacharged boomerang and a special operations heli pilot for that marine ability which does a lot of damage. Now keep in mind that all towers might get changed in a certain point of time and this video just brings together some of the towers that have stood the test of time and survived patch after patch. So that's it for this one, hope you guys enjoyed the video, those are the main 3 strategies that I believe everyone can do and get those black borders in BTD6. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.